a test of the judge's microphone. Test one, two. Witness box, test one, two. Jerry Box, test one, two. Podium mic, test one, two. Approach mic, test one, two. Mr. Mando, I believe it's time for you to call your next witness. Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, we call Sheriff Marvin Lipper. Mr. Chairman, is the rule no to adopt the witnesses in the vote? Yeah, the rule, if there are any persons in the courtroom who may be witnesses, you need to step out during the course of the hearing. Judge Allred, if you should see anybody, or Ms. Bando, see anybody that may be a witness, let me know and I'll remind them. Sheriff, come on around. If you would, sir, raise your right hand and be sworn. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do, sir. Take a seat there, sir. Good morning, Sheriff. Good morning, sir. Uh, could you state your full name for the record, please? Marvin, M-A-R-V-I-N, Lipford, L-I-P-F-I-R-D. How are you employed? I'm the Sheriff in M-A-R-V-I-N, Lipford, L-I-P-F-I-R-D. How are you employed? I'm the Sheriff of Harlan County. How long have you served in that capacity? I took office uh, January 1, 2007. Uh, when does your term expire? 2014, December 2014. Uh, could you briefly outline your career in law enforcement? I began my career as a um, reserve deputy, reserve special deputy in Knox County, Tennessee, Knox County Sheriff's Office. I moved back home, worked at the detention center in Harlan for a little while, and worked at several different agencies in the county. I've got just a little over 20 years of experience. In law enforcement? Yes, sir. Um, Sheriff, uh, are you familiar with a case that was handled in the Harlan Circuit Court, Commonwealth of Kentucky versus Doctors Vault? Dr. V and Dr. Lalani, who were yes, accused of drug trafficking out of their offices in Nashville, Tennessee, and dispensing pills in Harlan County. Yes, sir. Uh, was your office involved in that, uh, in the investigation of those charges? Yes, sir. We were a primary investigating agency. Right. At some point, uh, Sheriff, were you involved in and present when discussions about a plea agreement for the two doctors was discussed? Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Henry Johnson's office. Who was present? At that time, Henry, Henry Johnson and I were present. Uh, Lowell Lundy was on his way, who was the uh, one of the attorneys that um, was hired by the lawyers from Nashville. And um, Lowell had not made it yet, and um, then Judge Allred came in. And we know that the plea was entered on January 11th of 2010, if we know that date, can you kind of pinpoint when this meeting in Judge Johnson, in Mr. Johnson's office, took place approximately? Uh, probably November, December, in that range, maybe October. It was uh, it was the latter part of the year. And can you tell us uh, what was said uh, by Judge Allred, Mr. Johnson, and yourself during the course of that meeting in Mr. Johnson's office? Uh, we just um, Henry and I were sitting there. And um, Mary Hampton, who was employed by Mr. Johnson, came back and said that uh, Judge Allred was here, and Henry said, send him on back, and Judge Allred came in, and, uh, uh, you know, we small talked, just how's everybody doing, stuff like that. And, and um, 
he said uh, what, had, what had happened, Henry had called the judge and informed him that we were probably going to make a deal, and uh, uh, which is not uncommon, you know, courtesy to let the judge know what's going on. And, um, you know, Judge already came in, you know, everything was very cordial, and, and uh, he basically just said uh, he's not going to accept any plea that involves them leaving here with any money that they would leave here, leave Harlan County, should I say, uh, broke, or he would dismiss the charges for lack of jurisdiction. Uh, did you have any input or reaction to that? No, I, just, I was a little aggravated, but I, I didn't say much of anything. I mean, the judge wasn't out of line or anything. He just, uh, he was, he was cordial about it. He said, that's just a matter of fact the way it is. Did Henry Johnson say anything? I don't really remember. It just, it kind of surprised me. And I just, at that point, I started thinking, well, I was pushing for a felony plea. And, uh, I felt as though we had enough to get a felony plea because I wanted the doctor's license taken. And, um, that was something that Henry, I, and Lowell were going to hash out. And I knew that when we threw that Lowell's lap that there was going to be no felony plea. There, were, there was no way they would plead to a felony and surrender all their money. Mm -hmm. uh, and what was the amount of the money that was uh, at issue at that point when this discussion with Judge Allred and Mr. Johnson took place? I think their bond originally was set at total, both together, was like $1.2 million. And I think... If I'm not mistaken, they, uh, 200,000 of it was given back for them to pay some attorney fees or pay something. And it was a million dollars, basically. And so what happened next after Judge Allred made the statement that he didn't think the doctor should be leaving Harlan County with any money? Like I said, I, I was just agitated. Uh, basically, uh, Henry just, Henry, I think Henry said something along the lines of, uh, what are we going to do with it? And, uh, you know, part of it was to be used as a, as a forfeiture. Half was going to be a forfeiture to the sheriff's office, and the other half was to be made to a donation to the county uh, to be used for, you know, like a charitable organizations or – and I don't remember at that time if a water park issue came up, but later on the water park issue came up that it was going to be used to fund the water park. Did You mentioned this water park. How did that come up? And did that come up before the plea agreement on January the 11th of 2010? I believe it may have. I'm, I'm pretty sure it did. I'm, I'm sure at one point Judge Allred and I had spoke about it, and some people in the public had spoke about it. Um, like I said, I'm pretty sure that it did. I can't say 100% certainly, but I'm rather sure that it did. And were you present when the plea agreement was um, entered and was discussed in circuit court on January 11th. Yes, sir. It's a it was it's a standard practice in Harlan Circuit Court. Um, a lot of law enforcement uh, officers in the county complain when the, they say the Commonwealth Attorney deals uh, cases away. And one of the things Judge already did when he first took office was, uh, you know, he'd have officers complain, "Why did they do this? Why did they do that?" And if you have a case that's played out, you have to sign the plea agreement. I mean, it's not you're not signing saying that. You necessarily agree with it. You just sign it, saying that you've seen it. That way, when you, you know six months later, if you go back to the judge, all red, say, "Why'd you let this happen in your court?" There's the plea agreement. You knew what happened in this court, and um, but yes, I was there. It's standard practice that we were there to sign off the plea agreements. And what do you recall? Tell us what you recall being said by the attorneys and by the judge at that hearing. Well, they just uh, were back and forth talking, normal attorney stuff, and. Uh, uh, during the, um, the final phase of it, after everybody signed everything, the judge read the order, or read the plea agreement, and um, basically said that 500000 would be forfeited to the Harlan County Sheriff's Office, uh, with 15% per statute going to the Commonwealth Attorney. Um, and then, well, which I'm not sure if he mentioned 15% to the Commonwealth Attorney, but that's the way it's broke down in Kentucky. And um, then the other 500000 was to be um, donated to the County of Harlan, and it would, be, uh, it would be given to the Harlan County Fiscal Court, but the, control, but the control of money would be under the direction of the Harlan County Circuit Judge. And was the uh, purpose of that uh, uh, money that was going to be donated, the 500000 was that to alleviate drug abuse in Harlan County? Uh, yes, sir, from my understanding. <clears throat> Were all those terms specifically discussed in this hearing, as you recall? I believe some may have been, but... That's so long I could, without actually sitting and looking at it, I couldn't tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, what did Judge Allred do at the conclusion of the hearing? I, I mean, I guess he just accepted the plea like he normally would, and, and uh, that was pretty much the extent of it. I, mm -hmm. I left right after it was over and didn't think much else about it.
Right. And at that point in time, best of your recollection, had there been discussion, had there been any discussion about this water park and the money, the 500000 was going to be donated being used for the water park? There were, there were different discussions. Um, at one point, it was discussed that the uh, some of the money would go to like charitable organizations like the Harlan County Drug Court Program, which is a real good program, the Hope Center, different charitable organizations. Judge Joe Grishop had brought it uh, to me that he thought that uh, an organization that I co-founded, the chaplain program, should receive funds out of it because they help the kids and stuff, and drug court workers go down to their buildings and volunteer and stuff. And um, it was just back and forth. And when Joe had mentioned that to me, I told him that I didn't think that would fly, that Judge Allred had the say-so over what it could be used for. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, well, it's county money. And I said, well, that's between you and Judge Allred. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, then I mentioned to Judge Allred that, on one occasion, we, we passed all the time, and we used to see each other on and off all the time. Mentioned to him that, um, you know, that was something that was tossed out there. And he said, he said, no, Sheriff, he said, we're going we're gonna to probably put a water park down, you know, if we can get the county to give the land at Fifth Street in Rio Vista, which is a community outside of the city of Harlan. Um, and they own a huge piece of land down there. It would actually have been good for something like that. But, uh, and uh, I'd mentioned to him what Joe had said about the, different organizations getting like pieces of the pie, so to speak. And um, he said that that if you want to give your chaplain something, that can come out of your forfeiture. And, you know, I said, there person, I can't do that. There's no way to do that by statute. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, it was, there was no arguing over it. I mean, you know, the judge was cordial about it. Was there any, ever any question during these discussions as to who ultimately had the authority or approval on this money and where it was going to be spent? In a Harlan Fiscal Court meeting, it was made clear that it was Judge Allred, but, I mean, Judge Allred and I never had uh, discussions over who had control and who didn't have control. I just, uh, I knew he had control of it. And were you present at the Harlan County Fiscal Court meeting on January 19th of 2010? Yes, sir. Was the issue of the $500,000 donation from the doctors to the Fiscal Court the subject of discussion at that meeting? Yeah, it began, a, yes, sir, it did. What do you recall, Judge, did Judge Allred speak at that meeting? Uh, yes, he did. What do you recall Judge Allred saying about the money? He, um, well, he didn't say anything at first. Um, Judge Grishop uh, had came to me and um, some of the people that volunteered as chaplains for us and said that he was going to make a motion fit, or get the fiscal court to make a motion to uh, start divvying up the, the uh, $500,000. And when Judge, when Judge Grishop said that he was going, he started to make a motion. Uh, there's different charitable organizations. He said, for instance, the chaplain program. The judge already jumped up, made it clear that he said that uh, absolutely not. I'll veto any any um, thing that has, or how do you say it? I'll veto any action over this money. Basically, I can't remember verbatim what he said, but he made it clear that he had control of the money because David Kennedy, who is a magistrate in District Three in Harlan County, uh, said so. What you're saying is basically you have control of the money that we have to write the check, but you have control of the money. And he said, yes, that's absolutely right. And I'll veto anything that has anything to do with giving the money away. And um, basically, you know, that, that was pretty much it. Mm -hmm. in, in gist, that was pretty much it. I can't remember everything that was said. Uh, in your position as sheriff, had you ever seen the sitting circuit court judge appear before the fiscal court and talk about how money would be spent in a case like this? Mm, no, sir, but we've never really had a case like this either. Sheriff, I'd like to show you the exhibit. Previous to the matter in this matter, 2010. Take a second and review that. Yes, sir. Have you seen that order before? Yes, sir. Is that order accurate? In terms of the facts. Uh, what happened in court that day? No. Uh, was <clears throat> where it said in there that. Yes, sir. Uh, where it says in here that the language was inadvertently put in disorder by counsel for the defendants in the county attorney's office that was neither solicited nor approved by this judge. Is that accurate? No, sir. Why not? I was in court. That, that's why I was saying I was in court the day that it was made clear, and then in the fiscal court meeting it was made clear that the judge already had the. Uh, final say so or how the money was spent it was be ran through the fiscal court um, and then he had to say so how they had to spend it um, 
you familiar with an investigation uh, that was done by your office into an allegation that drugs were being sold by Judge Executive Grisham out of his office? They were not being sold. I mean, we conducted an investigation. He was not accused of selling drugs out of his office. My apologies. An informant told us that she would trade sexual favors for pills out of his office. Okay. Thank you, Sheriff. Um, tell us how that all started and how the investigation unfolded. Uh, a couple of my detectives were working as an informant. She was making drug buys in the Kaywood community, um, which is south of the city of Harlan in Harlan County. They drove by a nicer area of Harlan, in, in Harlan, in that area of Harlan, and she said, I can get that guy. And my detectives looked back, told me they looked back to say, Objection here, sir. Yes. Sis so Tate, if you could, Sheriff, just tell us about what you know about the investigation and how it unfolded. Uh, they, came, they called me, the detectives called me. They said, uh, uh, Miss Hensley's informed us that she can. Uh, Objection here, sir. All right, let me see if I can He's correct. correct. And sustained. Mm -hmm. uh, Sheriff. Yes, sir. Uh, with regard to this investigation, uh, did your office conduct one? Yes, sir. Right. And um, who was involved in that investigation? Detective Silas Whitehead, uh, Detective uh, Jason Snelling, and at the beginning, Detective Day was with Detective Whitehead when it first came to knowledge. And I take it that <clears throat> the investigation uh, went forward based upon an allegation that Ms. Hensley had made, correct? Correct. And your officers then uh, looked into it, correct? Yes, sir. Objection, please. Sustained. Tell me what devices and tell us what devices or tools your office used as part of the investigation. Uh, we used a um, purse that has a video camera with an audio uh, system attached with it. And we used a separate audio recorder um, as a backup if the video system went down or if the audio went down, we still had the video audio system. And uh, we would um, search the informant, search, or search the informant's vehicle. Um, there was always two detectives present, a minimum of two. And um, we would send them to wherever we were going. We would follow them. And if they had gone to like a public building like that, someone else would pick the informant up. In other words, someone else would watch them out of the vehicle. They would watch, for instance, Detective A would watch the informant go from the car to the building. Detective B would be standing in the building, watch them enter the door, and watch them go into, let's say, the office or the bathroom, wherever it was going to be conducted at, and which was Judge Grisham's office. Did you personally review these this evidence? <coughs> yes, sir. And what did you see? Well, the first video uh, was not real good, but um, it... it, it what she said happened at first made some sense because she said at one point Judge Grisham got up, and in the video you can see he got up, touched her on the leg, and you couldn't tell if it was as to say one minute or 